Kashmir is a contested state split between India and Pakistan. It's been the scene of violent clashes for over 20 years. Freedom is in our blood. Freedom. If our blood drops, it drops as a freedom. In 2010, after the discovery of the bodies of three civilians killed by the army, young men took to the streets, pelting the Indian forces with stones. When the smoke cleared, more than 4,000 police and soldiers had been injured, and 118 Kashmiris were dead, many of them children. Thousands were detained, and when they emerged, they told chilling tales of brutal torture, revealing a practice that goes back two decades. <laughs> For the last year, we have followed Kashmir's most dogged human rights lawyer as he unearths evidence of the systematic use of torture. Torture is not a historical issue. It is happening right now in, uh, in Kashmir Valley. Kashmir is one of the most beautiful front lines in the world. A vista of mountains and saffron fields, ancient temples and mosques. But this state, roughly the size of Ireland, has brought India and Pakistan to war three times. The Muslim majority has long campaigned for independence, with an armed insurgency breaking out in the late 80s. India exposed Pakistan as stoking the violence with bombs and bullets, and almost overnight, Indian Kashmir became one of the most heavily militarized regions in the world. Today, there are 700,000 troops and police in the state, one for every 17 Kashmiris. By the beginning of 2011, with the insurgency at its lowest ebb, the Indian security forces were playing cat and mouse with a new generation of protesters, armed only with rocks. India claims these stone pelters are also funded and organized by terror groups in Pakistan. The government says the damage and losses to the economy caused by the riots have cost the state 12 million pounds. The boys know that rioting can cost them their lives. Danish is the brother of 12-year-old Wamik, one of the youngest victims of the recent unrest. He was shot in the head by a police tear gas shell, fired, they say, in self-defense when officers' lives were threatened by stone pelters. After his brother's death, 16-year-old Danish rarely dares to leave his house, doing so only at 5 a.m. when the police and army are still in their barracks. When I go outside the house, I think so afraid of the police that uh, if you caught me, you will beat me then what will I do? My brother, he was 12 years old once. Now I am so alone. Without him, I am so alone. Lot of gas. What is the reason he had killed him? He was 12 years old boy. What can he do with the stone? Yeah. Into hospital. Okay. Mm. Okay. 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 Danish's father, Farooq, has been fighting in court to get to the truth. 
Recently, five eyewitnesses came forward to say that Farouk's son was simply playing a board game with friends when he was shot from behind at a range of just 10 meters. A judicial inquiry recently dismissed the police version of Wamik's death. But caught in a cycle of appeals, his father is seeking the help of Kashmir's top human rights lawyer, Parvez Imroz. Although Parvez practices law in the world's largest democracy, he sees few successful prosecutions. Since 1989, not a single case of murder, assault, torture or rape brought against the Indian Armed Forces has been allowed to proceed. The army says it has court-martialed 59 soldiers in that time, but will not name the men or explain the charges. Personally, I believe that at least some people have to stand and say, no, it's not acceptable and we will expose, we will campaign against it. I think that's very important, yeah. That's risky, isn't it? It is risky, yeah. I think everything is risky, but uh, 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 you have to take the risk. Yeah. It is risky, but it is uh, comparing uh, to silence, which will be more risky. Those risks include arrest. According to government figures, more than 5,200 were detained in the crackdown after the 2010 riots. The alleged ringleaders have been jailed under the Draconian Public Security Act, or PSA, that has been used on 20,000 Kashmiris over the last two decades. Imprisoned for two years without trial, many are re-arrested after release, again under the PSA legislation that Amnesty International has condemned as a lawless law. <laughs> Nazima's brother, a 24-year-old baker, was shot in the head by a tear gas canister and seriously injured during a protest. He was then detained in February 2011 under the PSA because the police allege he had sheltered militants. Fearing her brother will die in custody, Nazima has come to see Parvez. Nazima has already lost her older brother, killed by the army who said he was a militant. Since then, she says the security forces have continually targeted the family. I 
بہٕ حظ چھَس اَکھ نوجوان کوٗر مےٚ سۭتۍ تہِ گوٚو واریاہ ظلم مےٚ سۭتۍ تہِ کوٚر مِلٹری والیو واریاہ خبر آز حظ چھِ عام طور وَنان مول موج سا یا گٔے یا آسہِ سون بَچہِ گولہِ ہُنٛد شِکار نَتہٕ آسہِ پُلیٖسُک شِکار یا آسہِ اَمہِ سۭتۍ خٲطرٕ گوٗلۍ نَتہٕ آسہِ اَمہِ سۭتۍ خٲطرٕ پیسی اَتھ چھُ دۄہ تَنہٕ دِس چھوپُر جِگرٕ کَرُن اللہ تعالیٰ ہَس مَنٛگُن اَسہِ تہِ خۄدایَن سوز ٹیم یہِ ٹیم کَرِ اِنشاء اللہ پَتہٕ مٲنۍ برٛونٛٹھ کِہیٖنۍ اگر أمِس کیٚنٛہہ گوٚو أسۍ کیٛاہ کَرو پَتہٕ اَسہِ حظ یِہوٚے یوت سہارا بیٚیہِ چھِنہٕ اَسہِ کٕہٕنۍ اگر أسۍ یہِ گوٚو أمِس کیٚنٛہہ أسۍ تہِ مَرو أمۍ سٕے سۭتۍ حظ Nazima's fears for her brother are well founded. Many of those detained after the 2010 riots have claimed that they were tortured in custody. The UN Special Rapporteur on Torture has been barred by India from visiting Kashmir since 1993. So Parvez Imroz has set out to interview as many alleged victims as possible to determine if torture is being used systematically by the Indian state. India sees the state of Kashmir as a front line in the war on terror. More than 5,500 soldiers and policemen have died here since the insurgency began, with the government claiming that 37,000 civilians and insurgents have also lost their lives. But as India's very real security concerns have heightened, allegations of human rights violations by its forces in Kashmir have mounted. According to leaked US State Department cables, The Red Cross believes the Indian government condones the use of torture in Kashmir. Parvez Imroz has collected anecdotal evidence over the years that as many as one in six of Kashmir's 12 million residents have been tortured. But in the face of strident denials by the world's largest democracy, Parvez is attempting the first comprehensive statewide survey. Torture is a widespread phenomenon here, and we believe that the issue has to be highlighted here. After completing the torture uh, testimonies, uh, prepare a report that should be brought to the international community with the purpose it should stop altogether. Torture has been used very effectively by the law enforcing agencies. Most of the victims, they accept they, they, they feel lucky that they are alive, they are not been killed. یہ کیم کور نہیں ٹارچر چھِ مطلب یہ کلس لگو نہیں دب یا باقی چیز چھِ نہ یہ کیم تم سی چھِ نہ کرو سر ٹارچر چھِ تو کرو کیا کرو ٹارچر مز کیا کرو تو نن تم زنگن پہ کھولو سو زنگ پر زنگ پر کیا کھولو رولر سو دی رولر ٹریٹمنٹ از اے بگ اراؤنڈ ہیوی رولر which is being ruled on their body. In most of the cases, due to kidney failure, they die after some time. These uh, cases, which are very horrendous, they should not go unnoticed. They should be highlighted, they should be agitated. And people who are helpless, they should uh, be given the justice. No? You can also look at Army. Eh? Blood of a question, put, could you go to born? There are a lot of horrible stories and very difficult, you know, how we can cope up with all the cases, you know. And then uh, you have to prioritize because you have limited resources, you have limited energy. You go to the Palmer Jazuk, you took your other night in Noir. Must be a good solution to the city. I have a lot of nightmares. 
I was having nightmares in early 90s and a lot of nightmares. I remember that. Uh, and then uh, just uh, one, two months before, I have again had a nightmare. After a long time, yeah. That four guys coming on a motorcycle in the office. They are waiting for me and they want to hit me like that. These nightmares stem from real events. In 2008, after two fellow Kashmiri lawyers were murdered, the Indian security forces threw a grenade at his home while he and his wife and children were inside. As a result, Amnesty International and the European Parliament both sought assurances about his safety from the Indian government. People said they have come to shoot Parvez. Uh, they had guns and ammunition and all that, and we are we have we don't have anything. We have gotten we have got only a knife to cut the vegetables and nothing else. So sometimes I feel somebody is watching me and somebody is go, going to kill me just now. I used to hide be, behind the walls where I can't be shot properly. <laughs> My daughter understands now what, what kind of fear, what kind of danger we are going through. There is a risk and uh, we always have a worry um, that uh, if, our da if my dad comes late home or uh, everyone knocks, anyone uh, knocks after 7 p.m. in our house. So we feel um, worry, a sense of worries. So we ha always have a fear in our heart. So, that's difficult. It's hard. Security is needed, but nobody is going to give us any security at all. Who do you think you need security from? From the government. Who else? Do we feel insecure because of the government only? Right? It's a jungle law. <laughs> By the summer of 2011, with the mass arrests continuing, new and younger boys take to the streets. government crackdown tightens with curfews and a special section of the criminal code used to prevent gatherings of more than four people. Today is the UN Day Against Torture and Parvez had planned a march. It has also been banned. In the 144 implemented and office of the CRPC, there are more people from the CRPC. So the problem is that lifted. <laughs> One of those working with Parvez is Ashraf Rada. He joined the militancy in the late 1980s, fighting the Indian security forces in a group that was armed by Pakistan. Caught by the Indians in the mid-90s, he says he has renounced violence and now fights by documenting human rights abuses. Ashraf claims he was repeatedly tortured while in custody. In कि इंसानियत कहां पहुंचती थी मुझे जब लिटाया गया तो और सबसे पहले मुझे इलेक्ट्रिक शॉक्स इतने जोर से दिए गए कि मैं जब चीखता था तो ऐसा लगता था कि मेरे ये चीखने की जो आवाज है ये कहीं 100 फुट के कुएं से आ रही है तो उसके बाद जो हमारे टॉर्चर के इतने बड़े-बड़े बहुत सारे अगर कहें तो this time gone. Yes. Today I am feeling that how much my dad has suffered. So these moments make me very, 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 very anxious, very, very angry. 
uh, towards the Indian constitution, the Indian troopers, the Indian rule. My dad uh, one day uh, hanged me a rifle. So I just go to kitchen to show my mom that, look at me, it's, uh, my dad has hanged me a rifle. I just want to become like this. So mom slapped at me and said that you, you, I don't want to like you, like uh, picking a gun and choose this way. You can fight with India with your pen. Abed is studying for a degree in psychology and political science, and for now he is respecting his mother's wishes. He supports the work Pavez and his father do by keeping a journal to document the torture stories of survivors who have suffered over the years. Kalandar Katana was once a farmer who was accused of acting as a guide to militants. He was arrested by the Indian Border Security Force in 1990, shortly after the insurgency began. موسیقی मुझे ये टांगों की जख्म नहीं है मुझे तो ये पूरा मेरा गोश्त उठाया ये पूरे कमर का गोश्त दिखा सकते हैं कि वो ये पूरे गोश्त ये ये पूरे हमें खिलाया ये ये काट के आपको खिलाया गया ये हमारे कतरा कतरा कर कर हमें ब्लेड से काट कर तो हमें खिला रहे थे बोलते थे साले आप फिर दोबारा बोलेंगे कश्मीर आजाद करनी the State Human Rights Commission in Kashmir investigated Katana's claims and found that not only were they true, but that his case was one of a cluster where the Indian security forces had severed the limbs of suspects or damaged them so badly that amputation was inevitable. But despite a ruling in his favour, Katana's compensation has not yet been paid, and his legal case is still inching its way through the courts, 20 years after soldiers cut off his feet. Allahu Akbar. Katana's case comes from the early years of the Troubles, but today Abid and his brothers say they still live in fear. In Kashmir, one day one news comes, today he was killed here. The other day this news comes, today he was killed there. The third day this news comes, he was killed. There were a lot of people who were killed, they didn't know how to kill them, why were they killed, why were they killed, why were they killed, they didn't know how to kill them, their mother didn't know how to kill them, why were they killed, what was the reason for it? If we hear the word army, we will be get tense. Oh, army? No, no, no. Outside is not safe. Stay, stay at home. The mothers tell their students, tell their, tell their chaps or babies, don't get outside. Outside is army. What? What kind? That is terrorist. We are not terrorists. They are terrorists. They terrorize us. We don't terrorize them. अब मौत से क्या डरना? ये जो हम रोज मरते हैं, इससे तो यही मौत बेहतर है कि वो मौत आए। In September 2011, the government estimated that there were fewer than 400 militants fighting in Kashmir, but the security forces continued to dominate the landscape. Every three or four kilometers, do you find the paramilitary camps there? And where that people have been arrested and later on disappeared? Meaning a person who has been arrested by the law enforcement agency and they deny his arrest, and later on his fate is not known. We, we fear that the majority of the disappeared uh, persons, they have been killed. And uh, why are their bodies? Why they dispose of their bodies? It's a big question. The UN wants answers too. In February 2012, its Working Group on Enforced Disappearances reported allegations that since 1989, 8,000 Kashmiris have vanished in the custody of the Indian security forces. 
four times as many as disappeared in Pinochet's Chile. According to villagers, the men in these graves were lured to an army camp with the offer of jobs. A police investigation found that they were then murdered by soldiers in order to claim reward money from the government. The army claimed that they are the foreign militant, right? The body were exhumed and were identified to be the civilians. This has been the pattern of the army, that they are killing the non-combatants, Kashmiris, and later on they bury them in these graveyards. Parvez and his team have so far found over 6,000 of these unmarked and mass graves, with three quarters of Kashmir yet to be surveyed. The UN Special Rapporteur on Disappearances asked to visit India in 2011, but the request has been ignored. So Parvez is continuing to gather testimony, especially from villagers forced by Indian troops to dig the graves. और ये जो लाशें आप दफनाते थे वहाँ पे मतलब उनकी हालत क्या थी? किसी को गोली आँख से आई है, किसी ज़बान से आई है, किसी को सिर में आई है, किसी को छाती में आई है, किसी को टांग भाजू में आई है। तो वो सीन हमारे सामने है। आप ये तो बड़ा माशा है, बड़ा कारखाना है। 250 लाशें मैंने दफनाई हैं। सिर से जिसम का हिस्सा इधर होता है, किसी का इधर होता है, किसी के पीछे है, किसी के आगे है। इंटरकेशन का निशान उलाइ दा होता है। After six years of tenacious inquiry, Parvez has managed to get the State Human Rights Commission to concede that the graves exist, but the Indian security forces still claim the dead are militants, and that the missing have fled to Pakistan. The Human Rights Commission has now ordered DNA tests on the human remains in the graves, while in March 2012, the UN reminded India that it is under obligation to investigate those allegations and bring to justice those responsible. With money raised by friends of the family, Nazima has been able to make the 12-hour trip to the prison where her brother is being held. Danish and his family are also pinning their hopes on Parvez. But every time the family win a judgment, the police appeal and delay the hearing. Time 
ییٚلہِ بہٕ واریاہ پَتہٕ گوس پَتہٕ پیو مےٚ اوس مےٚ برادٔری بوے اَکھ ووٚن مےٚ تٔمۍ سٕے دوٚپمَس ہے مےٚ تا پونٛسہٕ کیٚنٛہہ کٔڑۍ مےٚ رۄپیَس پنٛژاہ ساس ہٮ۪تۍ مےٚ تٔمِس اِنٹرٛسٹَس پٮ۪ٹھ سودَس پٮ۪ٹھ خرچہٕ چھُ بَڑان خرچہٕ بَڑے واریاہ یَپٲرۍ ہَسا چھِ اَسہِ بَچَن یِمَن چھُس بہٕ وَنان پَلوَن اَتھ تہِ چھِ یِم زَڑٲے کَڑان کھٮ۪نہٕ چٮ۪نَس چھِ أسۍ زَڑٲے کَڑان پَتہٕ روٗد دانہِ صٲب دانہِ صٲبَس تہٕ آے پنٛنہِ حِصہٕ مُشکلات صحیح کیٛازِ یِمَن تہِ چھُ یاداش آسان بٲے سُنٛد زَبردَس پٲٹھۍ پاور تہٕ گوٚو تہِ سیپا آز اوس کَنہِ جنٛگ مایہِ سُنٛد تَتہِ ٲسۍ یہِ کیٛاہ تھام لٔڑکَن یِم ٲسۍ راتھ رٔٹِتھ زٕ لٔڑکہٕ رَٹان أکِس أکِس پَتہٕ کَران غٲبٕے جیلَن منٛز تھاوان بنٛد جیل بٔرۍ بٔرۍ پَتہٕ یورٕ کَتھ کٔر کٲنٛسہِ بَڑِ تہٕ تٔمِس دِن گول دٲرِتھ یا دِنَس چوب نہٕ نَتہٕ نِنَس رٔٹِتھ Despite the arrests, the rioting continues. So the government tries to block communications to disrupt the protests. Pehle to call ye SMS kar rahe the, us pe bhi ban lagai di gayi. Fir hum call kar rahe the, call se ek dusre ko bula rahe the ki is jagah pelting karne is waqt. Fir aaj jo hai call bhi trips ki jaati hai, bahut jada us pe bhi ladkon ko arrest kiya jata hai. To ab hum Facebook use kar rahe the, to magar jab hum dekh rahe ki pichle kuch mahino se ki Facebook pe bhi ban lagai gayi, Facebook pe bhi ladkon ko arrest kiya jata hai. My friend. He had given the thought for the freedom in the Facebook and uh, he had caught by the police and thrown into the jail for about three, three years. I also write in, the, in Facebook for freedom. I have the account in my fa Facebook. It is dangerous, but we have to do this because uh, instead of this, there is nothing. And because if we can't do this, then what can I do? I have to leave. I have to do something. The Indian authorities blame Pakistan for provoking confrontation and claim they have confiscated bundles of money intended to pay teenagers to demonstrate. By late summer 2011, the police say local press coverage is also provocative. So they shut down TV stations, ban the media from visiting certain towns and attack cameramen and photographers. The production team is also warned to stop filming and followed by plain-clothed police. The security forces are now photographing those throwing stones and rounding them up later, making the boys nervous of anyone with a camera. Yeah, yeah. Boys, I know. No faces, no faces, just boys. Oh, the police. Oh, they beat everyone. Despite the risks, two teenagers recently released from custody were determined to describe what they say happened to them while they were being held. There was a lot of torture in our hands. There was a gun in our hands. There was a gun in our hands. मेरे बाजू को ब्लेड से काटा गया मेरे चेहरे को ब्लेड से काटा गया हर जिसम के हर एक ऐसा से हमारे खून निकल रहा था बहुत ज़्यादा टॉर्चर किया हमारे साथ जो पुलिस का डीएसपी था उसने बोला कि आप ये जो अपने हाथ है ये दोनों टेबल पे रखें फिर उन्होंने गन उठाया गन से जोर से जोर से मारने लगे जब तक ना ये भी फट गया यहाँ से भी खून निकला तो तब तक उन्होंने नहीं छोड़ा हमारे आँखों से आँसू भी निकलने लगे पर हम चला ही नहीं हमें हम उनके उनसे कुछ नहीं बोले वहाँ पर वही ड्रिंक है वाटर पुलिस ऑफिसर सेट गिव दैम जूरिंग टू ड्रिंक कह रहे थे कि ये स्टोन बेल्ट रहे इसका चेहरा काट दो इसके हर एक काट दो इसकी टांगे काट दो ताकि ये दौड़ न सकें हर एक ऐसा काट दो ताकि यहाँ पे कोई आवाज़ ना फूटे हमारे खिलाफ गैदरिंग ऑल दीज अकाउंट्स पावेज एड्स दैम टू हिज स्टेट वाइड सर्वे डिटर्मिंड टू कम्प्लीट हिज कॉम्प्रहेंसिव रिपोर्ट ऑन टॉर्चर इन कैशमेयर
The Indian authorities say the security clampdown in Kashmir is paying dividends, with 2011 seeing the insurgency at its lowest ebb for two decades. But in February 2012, Human Rights Watch once again highlighted widespread complaints of torture and unlawful killings in Kashmir. Lawyer Parvez Imroz is nearing the completion of the most comprehensive study ever undertaken of torture, past and present, across the state. There are very severe cases of torture, you know, where the limbs have been chopped, where they're visible. But there are the invisible mental torture, where there are not visible torture marks. The torture victims are suffering from different sorts of the you know, the PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, depressive psychosis, they are not getting the support. Mm. Yesterday we were in Kupwara documenting the <coughs> disappearance profiles. When we asked them about torture, they said that, do you want to talk about everyone in the village? Because it's almost everyone in the village who has been tortured. Oh, what about the women torture victims? How many we have? Oh, very few, very few, because uh, the the women torture victims, these are cases not of torture only, these are cases of molestation as well. Mm -hmm. And there is stigma attached to it, and therefore they don't talk about it. One young girl did decide to speak out. In 2004, when she was 16 years old, she was picked up from school, still wearing her uniform, and accused of aiding militants. और मेरी ज़बान पीछे जाती थी, मेरे बाजू बंद थे, एक तो वो दो बंदे थे, तो एक तो मैं अकेली लड़की थी इतनी छोटी, तो मैं कुछ कर नहीं पाई उस टाइम, ऐसे ही कपड़ फाड़े मेरे यूनिफॉर्म को फाड़े ऐसे, मेरा शिलवार भी और मेरा फिराग भी बिल्कुल मुझे ओपन कर दिया उसने, मैं सोच रही थी � बाद में वैसा ही हुआ मेरे कपड़े फाड़कर और मेरी जिंदगी खराब कर दी उन्होंने मैं चिल्लाती थी कोई नहीं सुनता था खाली में ऐसी पड़ी रही घर में A Human Rights Watch report found that at the height of the insurgency, rape by the security forces in Kashmir was widespread, with few incidents investigated. With the pressure mounting on Danish's family, Parvez is worried that his parents, like so many others, will abandon their case. The court process is agonizingly slow. Everybody has to die. If there is another world, I will not be ashamed. Seeing these people who have been killed brutally, and I won't be apologetic. At least I will be there uh, with uh, 
uh, with this confidence that I did my best for you here. Yeah. After Friday prayers, demonstrations often flare up, especially around the Jamia Masjid, Srinagar's most important mosque. The police have been ordered to stop using live rounds. Instead, they turn to catapults. A group of boys have taken refuge inside the mosque, knowing officers will not enter. Abid and his friends were almost caught up in the latest crackdown. <laughs> Nowadays, if you see a new militancy has been Take, has been born the stone thrower militancy. You can say it like this. मेरे बहुत सारे दोस्त हैं जो आज तक पत्रों के पत्रों करते हैं और हिंदुस्तानी फौज और जम्मू कश्मीर पुलिस के खिलाफ पत्रों करते हैं कि बारा मुल्ला के खाली में बात कर रहा हूँ दो से लड़के ऐसे होंगे जिनको इन्होंने बनाया होगा ब्लैक लिस्ट में बारा है जब भी कोई किस्सा हो जाता है जब भी कोई पत्रा हो जाता है तो चाहे ये उसमें इन्वॉल्व हो नहीं हो फिर भी ये उनको पकड़ कर ले जाते हैं उनको इनके साथ हर वक्त टॉर्चर किया जाता है he believes his evidence will dwarf previous assessments of the scale of state-sponsored torture. After conducting interviews across the entire state, he has found that in some areas, two out of every three men claim to have been tortured by their own government. The way torture has been done in a very systematic and institutional way. You have uh, the testimonies from the torture survivors that how organized way they have been done. The torture have been done through JNK. So the people behind that, they have to be exposed. Because future, I think, will be only safe once your perpetrators are taken to justice. Yeah. But his family are anxious about the consequences for them. So you don't think that there is no danger for the family that there is no danger for the family that there is no danger for the family that there is no danger for the family. Because <laughs> 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 For Nazima, there is good news at last. A judge has ruled her brother must be released immediately, as the police have failed to present any evidence that he shielded militants. Yeah. 
With part of his skull missing, Feroz still needs treatment for the head injuries he suffered. But his fingernails are now regrowing. Zod comes or goes with me, numb kid. A mozni put numb done with total kid. Patastrok that must have marsang and masal in it, trek as game and must. It's you to buyot and ask the youth to ask the mute and the cormut key, very hand now Jovan Korok, it put and Zolom. Kikurpian, humanist media to hook with it, at Zulmas Kilapa, I was tolling, which is guaranteed one key at Zulmas Kilapan, Taman now Jovan, action nin at Kila, Kazki as such him on Zulmas Karn, was its honest man. In March 2012, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Executions visited India for the first time, meeting Parvez Imroz. Afterwards, Christoph Haynes warned that India faced considerable challenges and called for the UN expert on torture to be allowed in. Imroz fears that if nothing changes, there will be more violence to come. सरकार को यह पता है कि कश्मीर जो है यह एक उबरता हुआ लावा है यह कभी भी फट सकता है कश्मीरी आवाम जो है यह इस यह इस लावे का ईंधन है यह कभी भी फट सकता है और कि, किसी भी वक्त यह तूफान ला सकता है इज कमिंग टू जनरेशन टू जनरेशन बिकॉज़ इट्स काइंड ऑफ प्रेशर व्हिच इन द माइंड व्हेन माय फादर इज किल्ड इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी व्हाट आई विल डू इट्स नॉट लाइक टुडे आई विल बी बिकम अ सुसाइड मेंबर नो आई लूज माय माइंड आई लॉस्ट एवरीथिंग एंड व्हाट आई विल डू I will just put the bomb on my body. I will not think whether I will be killed or nothing like that. So it's very hard to us to enjoy the value of life. Our value of life remains zero. If the human being is one and the same, you have two eyes, I have two eyes. You have one nose, I have one nose. You have two ears, I have two ears. Why is this discrimination of peace? You have peace, why don't I have peace? Yeah, I can't say that what will happen in my future because I didn't have the my heart that tomorrow am I alive? 